Mark Potter, welcome to Pest Management News. Mark, how you been? Daniel, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for the invite. Hope you're keeping well too. Well, yeah, yeah, indeed. Mark, I was really keen to speak to you to Porter's Pest because you're an entrepreneur, you're working as a technician yourself sometimes, and you're keeping, um, you're managing your staff and you're uh, assigned as key workers now. How have you experienced the uh, COVID-19 crisis? Um, well, I think it's been quite crazy, really. Um, you know, I think it's affected everyone all over the globe. But I mean, here in London, it's it. I think things are slowly starting to become a little bit more normal now that we've been made key workers at last. I think everyone's taking their own precautions in PPE and keeping social distancing. But yeah, I think it's certainly making the, the game a little bit more interesting now on, on the war on pests, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told me a little bit prior to our discussion, you, you told me already that you're seeing a change in, in the rat population or rodent population in London. Can you tell me what exactly you've experienced, you and your team? Yeah, I mean, we are starting to see them a lot more in the daytime now, which is understandable. I mean, if you think most of the major takeaways are closed at the moment, so that's a large proportion of their sort of food provisions that are now removed. So, mm -hmm. you know, hunger would do anything we'll do crazy things to any kind of animal including ourselves you know mm -hmm. when we're hungry you know we need to eat and rodents are no different so we are starting to see them a lot yeah. more in the day now um and they're a lot more brazen you know they're, they're it's almost like a standoff uh, you, you know standoff of the bravest <laughs> yeah it's a good point actually it's, it's really easy to uh elaborate just you know hunger is going to drive you to do uh you know more extreme measures to just survive um, did you see rats in daylight and, and see you, you're managing a lot of property, so you're getting around uh, a lot of, uh, uh, through a lot of land. Uh, do you see them off, you know, um, on, on property during the daytime? We are. I mean, we, we look after quite a few waterside developments anyway. Um, we, we have a few high-end sites that we do where we get the odd bit of activity here and there, as you would mm -hmm. expect, but in particularly of late it's we have been starting to see them running around in the daytime which is it's quite nice to actually see our enemy you know normally we're just <laughs> dealing with the aftermath but yeah they, they're definitely about a lot more um than what they usually are in the daytime hours being a nocturnal animal you know you don't expect yeah. to see them and how do you communicate with your clients i mean do your clients perceive that as well or are you are you kind of consulting your clients hey look uh, during covid uh, uh, you know pests are going to get more hungry more brave and, and expect them to you know nibble through your property or whatever they're going to do damage to it do you uh, consult them to towards uh, doing more preventive pest control or did did any sort of the your technical instruments or your, your products that you're using anything change or is it still pest control but just more no, I think it's a good point that you raised there because I think, you know, it sounds so simple, but communication is key. Um, we we work very closely with all of our clients and that's one of the reasons why we get a lot of business from them is because it's a personal service. We always highlight any risks and concerns, uh, even more so during COVID. And we have taken on a lot more proofing of late where people say, yeah. oh, get that done, which we highlighted yeah. a few months ago. So, yeah, I oh. think, you know, it's a very, it's, communication is key and I think that's the best advice to any fellow professional out there is you need to have that trust bond relationship with your clients because you're the professional at the end of the day you can see the mm. risks particularly mm. where the activity levels are now going to be increased I love that you say you're doing more proofing I think IPM integrated pest management as also SIPA uh, so many times uh, pronounces it and, and highlights it that, that the importance of it um, is especially in these times getting a little bit more focus uh, in my eyes because I hear that from from more than just uh, one or two pest control companies. So I like that you yeah. you are feeling that as well and doing it. Um, what about insects? I mean, uh, the weather is crazy. It's probably the same in the UK. It's it's almost summer. I feel. And uh, is do you have any uh, sort of insect? Uh, uh, I don't know. Is there an increase of insect infestations? I know you're dealing with bed bugs as well. Do you feel anything like that in the market? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the the seasonal pests are starting to come about now. Yeah. I mean, again, we do a lot of we do a lot of domestic work, so we get a lot of textile pests, uh, carpet moth, 
Um, really? They're already yeah, they're already up and running now, and starting to damage property. So that keeps us busy. During the summer month, we probably get between four or five moth jobs a week. Um, okay. You know that keeps our team busy. Yeah. But we're already starting to get them coming through now. Um, I'm seeing a lot of fellow pesties posting pictures of queen wasps already out building yeah, nests. Yeah, now. Yeah. More nests, yeah. Yeah, so you know, um, a lot of green hero should be should be coming out soon. <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, I sure. think the weather is certainly making all the pests now a little bit more what well, encouraged, should we say, to mm. to come out and and start playing. Cool. So, what is your what is what is your guess on how the crisis is going to affect pest managers? Do you see a lot of your peers uh, of the SME, the small mid-sized enterprises? Uh, do they struggle? Do they shut down for a while? Are their workers afraid? Do they get government grants? Are the grants flowing into the companies, uh, you know, instantly, or does it take a long time? What is your perception of the market? How do people, especially the the SMEs, deal with it? I'm. Um, I mean, I've got a few close friends that are smaller companies, uh, a couple of which have applied for some of the, the, the grants that was announced. And the the feedback that I've got on that is that it's been very, very slow to process to a point where I don't think any of them have actually received any funding as yet. Um, it's, it was very clear in what you had to do. But again, you know, this is a, a national, an international pandemic and everyone's doing the same thing. So whilst there might be a bit of disappointment in those people, it's, it's something that we've never experienced before. Um, I think on the whole, the, the smaller companies are holding out. I think there's a few that I've seen that are, are taking on a few part-time jobs, which, you know, credit to them that, you know, they're looking out for their family, but mm. we're in a position where I think we, we're quite lucky that we've got a client base that mm. doesn't necessarily need people to be around. You know, we can go mm. out and do our, our, checks when where i mean i was out working on a sunday yesterday um mm. which benefited me because the roads were quieter there was no one around yeah. i was able to get five routines done and you know i think you just adapt you know that's what we do you know a good a good person will adapt to, to change and, and that's what we have to do you know we can't sit and moan about it we have to we have to adapt to the changes and we have to we have to cope yeah i think resiliency and 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 the uh yeah your uh, ability to adapt to certain circumstances that are just thrown at you and nobody really wanted to um get into is just what makes you know character all about and speaking about character i know you got a uh, you, your son is helping you uh, out in the in the business and it's probably you know hopefully the second generation incoming so what is he perceiving and, and especially my question would be directed in towards uh pest management always had like an ooh factor you know everybody thought like ooh, you're a pesty can you have a normal job or something and i think uh, now during the crisis where all of these fancy startups and coffee places and, and small boutiques or whatever that are really really suffering and going maybe near towards bankruptcy um yeah. having more and more problems and do you think like a stable business like a or stable uh, um a very uh, um you know firm business uh, uh just like a key industry like pest control gets more affirmation during these times um well i think a, a bit of credit has to go out to the BPCA on that because, you know, they was at the forefront of trying to get information for the pest controllers and they fed that through as soon as they had it. So, you know, bravo to them on that. But just elaborate, just going back a, a tiny bit on one of your questions regarding my son, Jamie. Now, Jamie's 16 um, mm -hmm. last month and we're, we're currently looking at trying to get him on the form of apprenticeship. Now, Ideally, I'd like to just make him leave school and come straight into the business as a trainee. Oh, nice. But there is, there are implications here in the UK. You have to be in further education until the age of 18, which is quite frustrating because for those that follow me and know about me and Jamie, you know, Jamie's been learning about pest control in, in all ever capacity. Ever since I've seen that, yeah. Ever since, you yeah. know, he could, he, he yeah. could do. So he's very much ready to come on as an apprentice. So that's where I would probably reach out to the BPCA to try and get this apprenticeship scheme up and running. It's there, it's active, but mm. currently there are no trainers working for the apprenticeship scheme, which is a little bit frustrating as a family run business who mm. wants to get his son into the industry. You mm. know, that would be my encouragement really um, mm. because he's raring to go, you know, he wants to get out in his green, green machine and, and start servicing sites. <laughs> 
Super. Yeah. Uh, I also got to say credit to Ian uh, Andrews and everybody from BPCA doing a great job. How do you perceive uh, you as a UK pest manager? How do you perceive the, the work of the association the past years and especially during the crisis? Um, I think during in, in past years, you know, they've they've been there. I've not really had to rely upon them on, on many things, which I suppose is a good thing. But yeah. in in the time of need as, as an industry of, of recent times, you know, they've been there. And I think even people that aren't the biggest fans of the BPCA have, have put their heads above the parapet and said thank you, you know, and I think that's that's where the gratitude is needed because, you know, as a, as, a, as an industry, we was very much affected by it because, as you say, you know, a lot of the smaller clients were closing. I've got some uh, fellow pesties that solely do restaurants, court schools, cafes, nursing homes, and, you know, their business has literally come to a standstill. So mm. it was it was important for them. Uh, and, you know, we've always got one eye on what's happening in our industry. You know, we like to be at the forefront of change. You mm. know, we, we do a lot of work with you on that front. So <laughs> I think, right. yeah, I think they, they've played a vital part, the BPCA, in, in, in feeding that information through um, and having a little bit of transparency. Mm. Yeah, it's sure going to be an interesting time and a lot of uh, resiliency is going to be tested with many, many companies. I've also seen what larger companies do like Rent-A-Kill now. Uh, they are very good at marketing as always because they have a huge budget and team for it that's doing an excellent job and they're now highlighting that they're doing uh, or training, uh, I think, over a thousand disinfectant uh, uh, or people that are doing this disinfection work, which is, which is crazy, of course. And I know a lot of people in the industry are switching to disinfection as, as a service uh, which I know you you yeah. had skipped uh, until 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 now uh, what do you think about all of that business and uh, pest controllers uh, doing disinfection works now I think we got to be careful on that front I mean for the companies that have been doing it as an established process for for years then that's fine you know you know you know that game you you know the risks you know what you're doing but with the greatest respect to people that are now offering it as a service to COVID-19, mm. my, my own personal thoughts on it, I, I, you know, I just, I, I'm not sure. I, I just don't think it's something that you can learn overnight or just read a label and assume that you know what you're doing. But, you know, fair play. If people, if people want to do that and it works, then I, I'll give it all the support. Yeah. But we've decided as a business, we're not professional in that field so we'll leave it to the <clears throat> professionals to do it you know this is this is a disease that is, is killing people and we can't we can't play around with that so if someone knows what they're doing and they want to do it successfully i'll take my hat off to them but we're not willing to put our name to something and i.e hoping for mm -hmm. the best you know mm -hmm. we want the the very best out there to be doing it successfully mm -hmm. for the sake of humanity cool yeah i agree with that mark last one our last question would be are you changing any strategy in your business um, for the next couple of years? Do you see any change? I mean, um, let's imagine COVID is not going to go away for the next six to 12, maybe 18 months. Uh, who knows? Is there any uh, sort of uh, strategic change that you bring into the business? Are you trying to you know, send invoices digitally? Are you uh, planning to get even other products? Are you um, trying to you know, um, alter your service or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, we're we're constantly always changing our approach. And again, going back to people that know me, you know, I'm very hungry. Uh, I've been running my business for three and a half years now. I've been in the industry for 17 years. Mm. Um, and there's never a day that I wake up and thinking, you know, how much, how can we do this better? So the strategy will always be the same, you know, wake up even more hungrier every day, give the best service possible. Um, in terms of invoicing, you know, we use uh, we use an accounting software which helps with the invoicing at the moment. And we've had some really good clients that have been paying some, you know, nice nice invoices that are due. Um, that always helps with cash flow. And we've been quite lucky enough to be comfortable to to sort of just sit tight and and get paid on what's at, what's due at the moment. So we, we've been quite lucky. But my my advice to fellow pesties would be, you know, just keep that hunger and, and keep that level of service. You know, don't let that level slip. Hmm. Maybe to close, close with uh, Steve Jobs' quote, stay hungry, stay foolish, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Hey, it was good to talk to you. Thank you for your insights. And you, Jamie, your family, say hi to all of them and you stay safe and, and healthy. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Daniel. Take care.